Deputy Director of the Adam Smith Institute, uh, Matt Kilcoyle, Kilcoyne, uh, and joining me from Leeds is the Director of the Northern Powerhouse Partnership, uh, Henry Morrison. Uh, uh, Mr Morrison, uh, what do you make of what the parties are saying they're going to do about the North-South divide? I mean, all of them have mentioned it to a certain degree. I think there's three ingredients to, to close that North-South divide, and those are the ingredients for the Northern Powerhouse. Uh, investment in transport infrastructure, you're hearing a lot about Northern Powerhouse Rail from the three main parties, uh, and also HS2, where um, the Conservatives are less supportive but have moved their position slightly, but Labour and the Liberal Democrats are absolutely committed. I think where it's less clear is around areas like education and skills, where we need to see further devolution. Uh, Labour have talked about devolution specifically in Yorkshire, but not more widely. Uh, you've seen the Conservatives commit to devolution everywhere. And the final ingredient, I think, is the is that wider point about uh, economic rebalancing. The North has to be a priority. And if the, the priorities in the, the party manifestos can be shown to be fiscally credible, what they need to be doing is demonstrating they are going to invest what it will take in the North of England to, to close that gap. And I think one of the challenges is uh, the Conservatives have talked a lot about uh, structures and devolution, but aren't so clear about the, uh, the financial element of that, apart from around transports. Obviously, Labour talked a lot about the, the finances, perhaps not as committed to the mayoral model, but I think today, with their Northern Manifesto, we may see some of their mayors being more involved, and that will send a strong signal about that Labour would take the mayoral devolution that happened under George Osborne seriously and work with those people who've got a mandate, because devolution and taking power and money out of Westminster is the only way, in the end, to close that North-South divide. Do you agree, Mr Kilcoyne? I mean, Adam Smith Institute believes in markets and a um, certain amount of laissez-faire. Should we be agonising about disparities in the country? Well, there are some disparities regionally, um, and I think we do have to take those seriously. One of the biggest causes of regional inequality, though, is our planning system, which means that we've created a very restrictive housing supply in our cities um, and areas of real economic growth, whether that's London or Oxford or Manchester or Leeds. Um, and that's meant that it's really... We've incentivised people with high-skilled jobs and who are still going to get high pay even after housing costs have been able to move in, and, they, and, they, and therefore we've got good levels of growth in our cities. We've created a brain drain, and we've made sure that people with low-skilled jobs are actually staying in areas, and we've created a weird disparity of regional inequality we didn't need to do. Um, and actually, some of, the, some of the manifestos suggest that they are going to be having huge house-building programmes, whether that's Labour's social housing programme, but actually that creates regional sticking so, points. Clear, what the, are you saying well, it should have been done in policy to get around the disparity? Well, you have to increase the amount of housings that are, houses that are being built and you have to make sure that they're being built in the right areas. And the Conservatives have got a, quite a good policy, actually, of, uh, which were announced at the conference, um, of making sure that we have a more liberal system, that we have more buildings in city centres being used for housing as well, so that we're able to bring in people who yeah. are earning the sort of hundreds of thousands megabucks, but also people on more modest incomes as well into our cities. Uh, Mr Morrison, do you see... Uh... Housing as being a key to balancing things out? Well, it's amazing that Adam can talk about the North-South divide and not talk about the North once in his answer, because I think that's the challenge of a Westminster-based policy elite, isn't it? So what the reality is that housing investment, 80% of the government's housing funding is currently being spent in, in London and the South East, not in places like the North of England. And if we're creating lots of new jobs in places like Manchester and Leeds, and we need to be building the right houses. I absolutely think housing is important, particularly linked to infrastructure. But the idea that simply liberalising the planning laws is going to close the north-south divide is for the birds, because we're talking about a structural imbalance, which, if we corrected it, could generate an extra trillion pounds for the economy till 2050. That's a huge economic prize, and I'm surprised an economic think tank like the Adam Smith Institute isn't more committed to projects like Northern Powerhouse Rail and HS2. And on HS2, remember the Adam Smith Institute are those people in that same little bit of the Westminster bubble, all funded by the same people who don't want key infrastructure to rebalance the economy, and they well, should be embarrassed about it. If you, if you don't, mind, if you don't mind me saying so, because the North South divide is, is absolutely ridiculous. If you don't mind me saying so, firstly, I'm, I'm mad, not Adam. Secondly, I mentioned Manchester and Leeds in my response. Thirdly, I'm actually from the North. I'm from North Wales, and, I'm, and I lived in Cheshire, and I lived in York. Uh, so when we talk about when we talk about regional inequality, though, we have to remember that actually that's not a zero-sum game. The growth in the South, the growth across the whole of the United Kingdom, does not come at the expense of growth elsewhere. No, you're absolutely right. Infrastructure is something that the government should be spending more on in the North, especially in rail. 
should be doing should be making sure that we don't have effectively buses on tracks in the rail on the rail networks between Huddersfield and Leeds and Manchester. Uh, but and what about HS2? Should, and should HS, but no, HS2 is HS2 is a is a white elephant project. It's hun it's tens of billions of pounds spent on making sure that we get from from London to Birmingham 30 minutes early. Well, that's only the first phase. I mean, it's designed to link up. Uh, to and, and to create capacity for people to get to the there north, plenty, to get to Leeds and further on. There are plenty of projects out there in the rail industry, making sure that our signals are updated, making sure that we've got newer trains up in the north, that so we don't have to have high-speed rail in order to have effective rail. We just need to make sure that there are... We do have, trains... have more capacity, don't we, if we're, well, to, exactly. if, if we're to link the north to the south? The biggest, the biggest problem for capacity in rail is the fact that our signalling system, which is, which is still part of the nationalised system, um, is, is woefully underprepared for, for the modern system. And that, and that is the real crux of the issue when it comes to rail. But we've also got to make sure... Well, I we mean, have to I, I'll just say, I've been travelling up and down north and south this week and uh, the West Coast mainline just packed up two days ago. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and uh, 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 Mr Morrison. I was going to say, I have to agree with you, Adam. I had colleagues stuck on the train uh, trying to get to Cumbria for an event this week as well, probably one of the same trains you were, you were stuck on, our colleagues were stuck on. And I think what we need to remember is in this election, there is a real choice. There are those parties uh, like the Brexit Party or anti-HS2 who talk the talk on wanting to win northern seats but aren't prepared to deliver um, and to actually put the money where their mouth is. And I think that the real issue is in the north of England, after the travel chaos last May, after all the work that your colleagues across Sky have done, to support the Power Up the North campaign by the northern newspapers, like the Yorkshire Post, where I'm here in Leeds. The point is, they want a lot more than planning reform. And I think a few neoliberal ideas from a right-wing think tank are not going to close the North-South divide. I think that we need to start looking at the structural causes of our economic problems. And George that Osborne, when he was cause. Conservative Chancellor, understood that. We've now got Labour and Conservative parties, both the Chancellors and Shadow Chancellors, win the campaign at the very start, talking about the North-South divide. And I think we've invited the party leaders to come to the North and give speeches to outline their, their offer to the North of England. And as the election will be decided here, we expect to be seeing a lot more of those party leaders. And I think the Labour regional manifestos today, Spe which speeches, include areas like carbon speeches capture from storage, the, speeches are a from good party sign. leaders. Speeches are from party leaders in the north are not going to solve the inequalities in this country. Now, I was trying to explain, actually, that the, that the, that the structural underlying um, problem in this country that, of regional inequality has been the fact that we haven't had people being able to move to areas where there are jobs, and that actually that we've created a problem where we allow people of a very high, of a very high education, people who've been able to be born in privilege, people who've been able to get, in, get on in life, they're able to move, they're able to get good paying jobs, and they're able to get on. People who are, people who are not so fortunate in life have been stuck in areas where they've not been able... Yeah, but that's that's not helping the northern region. I mean, basically what well, you're no, saying no, is people northern ought to be able to move, to move out of those no, no, well, well, is, well, there's nothing wrong with economic migration. Actually, when I looked yesterday, in fact, the IPPR's report, when it says, you know, when it tries to, to make, when it tries to make an analogy between the UK and Romania and Poland and so on, firstly, firstly, I think it's quite insulting to sort of, you know, play these countries off against one another, but ignoring that for a second, if we look at the sort of... If we look at the fact that... I looked at the statistics, there are more people looking to come from Romania and Poland to the UK than going back. And it will go from the UK going to those countries. And there's a reason for that, because people think the that they can come to these report. countries. And the actually, cities, cities are engines of growth, whether, and, that, and the future growth as well. And whether that's Leeds or Manchester, whether it's Hull, okay. Newcastle, whatever, that's actually the future for the North as well. It's the cities of the North. You've great not got any ideas houses. to help build those cities. Your entire premise is obsessed with London planning reform and that's just an, an ingredient for more people to move into London. Actually, you talked to, to, to the Kerslake Review people, the 2070 too. Commission. London councils want the North to do better, so we don't have as many people having to move to London to get better jobs. We need to improve the prosperity of the North of England, and that isn't actually just about northern cities. You need to be getting the nuclear sector and small modular reactors, for instance, in Sheffield, which is a city, but also benefiting West Cumbria, towns like Warrington. I'm with you on that. I don't know why These you've created this weird antagonism. These are need to be debated in this election, not just planning reform. It's absolutely ridiculous, the idea that some sort of right-wing, economic-only footprint is going to change the British economy. You need to have an integrated plan and industrial strategy that works, and cancelling HS2 and allowing people to build wherever they want is going to do nothing to close the North-South divide, and you shouldn't go around peddling the idea that it's That's going to That's just not true. The, the, the Manchester is, has been restricted from building out as, and building up as everywhere else in the country because we have a one-size-fits-all planning system. I don't know why you've got this weird antagonism with the idea that I hate the North or the idea that the right-wing parties hate Your the North. It's just not true. The, no, but actually... 
I think no, no, it's actually quite insulting the idea that the, the people that uh, right. from, from elsewhere in the country don't care about the north. I think part of the problem is that you've got an identity politics and a grievance culture. But actually, people in the north want to see their cities grow. They want to see their well, towns grow, and they want to see economic growth building up. There's not any grievance in it. But we do call out people who've got their own narrow agenda who are trying to jump on the back of the northern people who are going to decide this election. That. All you've done is your, your, your created created ideas further the agenda. Right, That's I think doing. we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, obviously, uh, strong views and concern about the north-south divide.